My name is Jean-François Saint-Pierre, and I'm the program manager for the World Health Data Hub at the World Health Organization in Switzerland. Amazing, all the way from Switzerland. It's good to have such a good representation here at, at HIMS. What brings you here to, to HIMS first, like? Um, yesterday, I presented the work we're doing at the World Health Organization, which is the World Health Data Hub, a platform fully in the cloud for data science for the entire organization. Interesting. I'd love to learn more about the, the Data Hub and what that's about. Tell me more. So the Data Hub is, first of all, an initiative from the DG, Dr. Tedros, in 2017, part of a, an ambitious transformation agenda for the organization in terms of modernization and, and also taking advantage of the latest technologies. So in the data space, taking advantage of cloud technologies and data management and data science and mm. machine learning and whatnot. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And having, you know, information more accessible in the cloud, who, who's it for and, and what's the data used for? That's a good question. So it's used at the three levels of the organization, but eventually the data is published on a public website, mm. highly accessible as well. So we wanted the website to be fully responsive, in the six official languages. So we're kind of collating everything that the organization was doing and has been doing for many, many years mm. onto a single platform yeah. and presenting it in a coherent way. What's the benefit then? Is that, is that for, for research purposes or for consistency of data? Like, yeah, tell me about the, uh, the why there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So the why is uh, we consider data to be a public good. Mm. So making health data accessible to everyone so that could be for policymaking purposes, that could be for informational purposes, that could be for scientists or research. We want data, the WHO.int, to be the single place for WHO's health data. Mm. Now we can consume that in various formats. So you can actually browse or search, but you can also download the data sets and, and play with it further or connect to APIs and get data as it changes. So we're making the, the um, public website, data.wu.int, highly, highly accessible yeah. for everyone to use. I imagine then there's all de-identification and everything that goes on. You know, talking about making health information really accessible, there's always the challenges around cybersecurity and, and authenticity and trust and all of that too. So. True, but it doesn't really apply to the data that we're publishing because mm -hmm. we're getting from countries aggregated data yeah. from the onset for the purpose of publishing mm -hmm. So we're publishing health indicators, helping countries make uh, informed decisions on policies and, and directions. And so the data we get is already fully anonymized because it's aggregated data. Yeah, yeah. And so then what, what would you hope then happens with the data? You know, you talked a little bit about the opening up, making it more accessible and, uh, and all of that. But then what would you hope the, the consumers of the, the, the data do with it and, and the benefits? Um, first of all, WHO wants to be and is the trusted source of health data. Mm. Uh, the data we publish is validated with the countries themselves. It's got a lot of science supporting it behind it. So there's a lot in there for making informed decisions on the basis of actual trusted data. So in terms of, of audiences or target populations, it ranges from uh, ministries of health or the citizen also who's perhaps invited to vote and, and the impact is making that on the basis of data you can trust. Yeah. So we're publishing a lot of health indicators. Uh, right now, what we have on the platform is the 58 SDGs, health SDGs, um, Sustainable Development Goals from yeah. the UN. Uh, we've got country pages as well, which inform about high-level indicators in the health sector on a country per country basis, but we've got loads of new products that will come out presenting health data. I, I know in the um, health data space, we often talk about the need for standardization and consistency. How, how do you go about thinking, you know, every country has their own way of doing things and everything's a little bit unique, but then to be able to try and compare and have, you know, apples for apples, like, what, what's that process like? Very good question. So. The information we get from countries will vary from program to program. Mm. Program being a subset of WHO dedicated to, uh, for example, malaria or tuberculosis or non-communicable diseases. Mm. 
And each of these verticals has a slightly different way of working. So at that level, they will engage with countries and expect the data to be in a certain shape or form. But ultimately, when we publish it, we re-standardize it to a naming convention that works well for health data. Yeah. And so that's how we, we do it. Now, there's a question in the question there where the data that comes in could be difficult to compare across countries mm. and that there is a fully documented and, and transparent process for creating estimates off of raw collected data. That, that's where we apply data science. That's where experts come together and that's where we go back to the member states and countries for validation of the outcomes of those estimates. So we will be realigning the data that we get so that it becomes comparable. Yeah. And is there historical data there? To, you know, you're looking across, across this way, and you can tell I'm obviously not a data scientist, but if you're looking across this way at, at countries, can you then look historically back at time as well? Like, I would imagine there'd be some rich data in there that hopefully then being more accessible, there might be some interesting insights that, that come from making it more available. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's a lot of that. And, and first of all, one of the challenges we need to, and we address with the World Health Data Hub, is a single point of access for all data. Right now, you might have to navigate from different portals within the organization, and it might make the data difficult to find. Mm -hmm. So collating everything under a single URL and presenting it in a coherent way and allowing you to have sideways journeys yeah. to find what you're looking for and perhaps... As you do that, find additional information mm. is a really powerful thing. So Yeah. So we just talked retrospectively for a second, but then looking forward, you know, we're, we're always collecting more healthcare data. That's a challenge in itself as more and more technology is utilized. How do you see that? Or what do you predict the future to be? What can we look forward to seeing from the, uh, the data hub and, and how it might be used even further for me? On our side, we still have lots of work in creating new products for the public website that, well, that I'm talking about. So new ways of engaging, new ways of presenting the data. In terms of the data itself, it, it depends on the needs of the organization and the requests from the member states. And so that's how we come up with indicators, for example. And that's the bulk of what gets published. It's indicators and the narratives that go alongside them and in the, an the analysis and the policies that you might want to enforce or suggest um, related to those indicators. How do I move maternal mortality indicator in a group of countries and what, what can I do about it? Mm. So the website, the website that we're working on, data.co.int, will help you find those things and, and perhaps work on more. Amazing. Any other final thoughts or um, things we can look forward to? Yeah, so uh, we've talked a lot about the public side of the World Health Data Hub, but internally, there's a lot of new things that the hub brings to the organization in terms of modernization. On the data acquisition side, for example, where we use modern tools and, and, and automate repetitive tasks and align them, uh, very flexible storage, unlimited storage. Um, we have a secure communication platform for HQ and regions to engage with countries and member states in order to share information. That's all part of the hub to finally get to the publishing yeah. aspect. Yeah, that, that alignment and consistency, that's going to be really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool.